This week on Distant Shores, we get out on the water, sailing around the Solent on the south coast of England, while construction continues on our new Anxail Orion 49 in the Netherlands. Some of the top sailing schools in the world can be found in the UK, and we show you how sail training can improve your safety at sea, your docking techniques, and confidence behind the wheel. And Paul tests out his skills, participating in an RYA Yachtmaster Offshore course. We also show you some of the advanced training you can do if you're considering working professionally on a boat or ship. We're Cheryl and Paul Shard, hosts of the Distant Shores Sailing Adventure TV series. We've been cruising and living aboard for 33 years, documenting the sailing lifestyle. Join us for the building of our fifth boat, a custom aluminum Orion 49. Although Cheryl and I have been cruising internationally for over 30 years and have sailed over 120,000 nautical miles, we feel you can never stop building your skills and continuing to train and improve. So this week I'm in the UK completing the RYA Yachtmaster offshore course that was interrupted by the pandemic in 2020. After doing the Yachtmaster exam in the UK, I'm flying to the Netherlands to check on the progress of Distant Shores 4, our new aluminum Enxail Orion 49 sailboat. But something else we continue to train in is languages since we do so much traveling. So I've been studying Dutch using Babbel, the sponsor of this week's video. Zij weet het niet. Zij weet het niet. Babbel is the number one language learning app in the world. The lessons are easy to follow and help you learn a language through real life conversations. Kunnen we een boot huren? Kunnen we een boot huren? People always ask us how we deal with so many different languages on our travels. Well, there's a wide variety available on Babbel, and we find learning to communicate in a local language enriches our experiences. You just need a few minutes a day to get results. Zij weet net heat. Lessons are designed by expert language teachers to prepare you for situations that you will actually encounter in real life when speaking the language you've chosen to learn. Babbel also offers a 20-day money-back guarantee. Maybe you have a trip coming up this summer, and learning a new language would add to the experience. So I invite you to give Babbel a try. Click the link below to get 60% off your subscription. A gorgeous day of boating in Britain. It is mid-April. It's my birthday, actually. There you go, April the 12th. And it's pretty cold, but if you're dressed in the right stuff, it's okay. We're out here in Portsmouth Harbor doing drills and skills. Uh, mooring up about 20-30 times in the day and tying up to docks and maneuvering in close quarters and I think this kind of a session is really good for someone who's just getting into boating especially someone who's just got a new boat it's really a good thing to practice uh, many times the same sort of maneuvers to really get the feeling of how your boat handles the wind uh, whether the current will take it or the wind will take it in a certain situation because uh, you know we always end up in these spots like into a marina and there's a narrow channel and uh, you got to know exactly how the boat's going to handle when the, if a breeze is coming down, you can see it coming, and what are you going to do about it? So this kind of practicing is really useful. Uh, of course, something like this, that if people wanted to go and to do a little bit of brushing up on boat training. The RYA, Royal Yachting Association, is recognized worldwide for its expertise in sailing and powerboating training at both recreational and professional levels. Yachtmaster is a trademarked term by the RYA, and is a very highly regarded qualification respected around the world. For those new to sailing, the recommended path is to take the day skipper course first before advancing to Yachtmaster Coastal and Yachtmaster Offshore. To achieve the Yachtmaster Offshore qualification, you need to pass a practical on the water exam that can last for up to 12 hours. You also need to have sailed more than 2,500 miles within the past 10 years, including spending 50 days at sea, on more than five passages of at least 60 miles, with two as skipper. We're based out of the busy naval harbor of Portsmouth with convenient access to the Solent. Today we're doing skills and drills, which is the idea of practicing things like man overboards, practicing coming into a dock under sail, practicing coming reversing into the docks in the wind, picking up moorings under sail, all the more difficult the things that you need to learn if 
as one day will happen, you're going to have to deal with an engine that's quit. We have some very gusty and generally terrible weather with rain, hail, and gusts to 40 knots in the course of this week, and it's actually pretty good for learning, practicing in the tough stuff. Also, we're practicing in the Solent, which has pretty strong tides to deal with as well. Really, the Solent is a great place to learn how to sail. There are many nice cruising destinations in the Solent, from protected harbours to anchorages off the Isle of Wight. The Solent itself is protected to the west by the Needles and forms a challenging tidal channel that is chock full with traffic and naval history. It's much easier and safer to approach the dock heading into the tidal stream, so the first thing to do is figure out which way the tide is running. We observe the dock where we are planning to tie up and see the water is ebbing, flowing out of Portsmouth Harbour. So in this case, we're going to be heading downwind to be into the ebbing tide, and we say the wind is against the tide. Normally, we would motor downwind into the current, but we're practicing under sail, as if our engine is out of action. We use a small bit of the furling jib unrolled, but today the wind is so strong we still go too fast, so we furl it in and use the Dodger spray hood to catch some wind for just a little bit of speed to keep steerage way. But when we get up to the dock, we'll need to go even slower. As we approach, we drop the Dodger, but the wind still pushes us too fast for controllable docking. Tom, our instructor, suggests a makeshift drogue by deploying buckets on lines to slow us down, a method of putting on the brakes, so I can ease the boat gently up to the dock. You can see it pays to have your crew practice the skill of tossing a line properly. A few hours later, when the tide has changed, we can practice docking when the wind and tide come from the same direction. The wind is still gusting up to 35 knots, but in this case things are a little less difficult since we know it will be easy to stop by just luffing the sail. We've put all three reefs in the main. It's rare to have the opportunity to practice this kind of maneuver, but very good to learn if you can. After everyone has a couple of turns docking, it's time to head back to the slip, a pub dinner, and an evening of practicing the coal rakes. The Yacht Master exam will include an assessment of your skippering skills, boat handling, general seamanship, navigation, safety awareness, and knowledge of the international regulations for preventing collisions at sea, commonly called the coal regs, to a very high familiarization. You might have seen the flashcards for sale in Chandleries to help you bone up on these. I also recommend a book such as this Collision Regulations Handbook. Another method is online learning, and there are various course options that allow you to self-study all of the theoretical aspects of the Yachtmaster exam from charting, the collision regulations, and basically everything you're likely to be asked on the day. I checked out the Yachtmaster Offshore Theory course available from skippersonline.net and found an entertaining and informative course. Rule 9 relates to the conduct of all vessels in narrow channels. For example, a vessel proceeding along a narrow channel should keep as near to the outer limit of the channel, which lies on her starboard side, as is safe and practicable. 
and a vessel of less than 20 meters in length, or a sailing vessel, shall not impede the passage of a vessel which can safely navigate only within a narrow channel or fairway. Skippers Online also has RYA day skipper courses for less experienced and aspiring skippers, as well as the RYA Yachtmaster Advanced course. For an overview of the skills and philosophy of the modern Yachtmaster, I also recommend the charming and entertaining book The Complete Yachtmaster by the British author Tom Cunliffe. Tom begins with an introductory chapter analyzing the makeup of a good skipper and continues with chapters chock full of sailing wisdom, well worth the read. So this has been a pretty fun week. I have to say I wasn't exactly sure what it was going to be like. That's partly why I wanted to <clears throat> film this experience of trying the Yachtmaster exam. Having sailed 33 years, I guess you kind of get to think you know everything you could need to know to make it all work, but I have to say that being here has helped me to bone up on a few things that I had uh, forgotten to do since We've been sailing for 33 years. Back then we used to just plot everything on the chart, doing fixes and everything to do navigation, and I haven't done that for a number of years, so it's been nice to get back to that kind of skill again and then learn some new skills too. So if you haven't done uh, qualifications for sailing or any kind of a course other than sort of the beginner boating stuff, I have to say I think it's pretty worthwhile to give that a try. And you couldn't ask for a more inspiring place than down here in Portsmouth in the UK. It's such a center of uh, the Navy recreational boating as well. I really enjoyed it. We did four days of basically doing skills and building skills and then did the Yachtmaster exam yesterday. It was very interesting to have a test on all of the more complicated stuff that we were doing that we don't do very often like piloting just entirely by fixes, trying to follow the depth sounding contours along the chart uh, without using the GPS because you tend to just slip into that mode of just relying on the GPS and the plotter since we've had them using the traditional methods and so that's been totally great we had a nice time so I got the Yachtmaster offshore certificate which is what I was hoping for and uh, that feels pretty good if you're considering a career in the marine industry working on a boat or having paying guests on your own boat, you may be required to have STCW training. STCW means Standards of Training, Certification and Watchkeeping for Seafarers. Paul and I did the basic safety training course just before lockdown in 2020. This is an intensive five-day course which includes elementary first aid, fire prevention, and a very exciting firefighting course. In this case, the training facility had extensive simulated fire environments and gave us the ability to practice with various kinds of firefighting equipment, including entering an indoor fire in a ship. This is a real firefight with burning hot smoke throughout the corridors and a burning room to practice putting out a real fire. You breathe air out of a tank, otherwise you will burn your lungs. It's about 70 degrees Celsius in there, centigrade. Seven. Oh gosh, look at my phone. Yes. <laughs> Don't take a white iPhone into a fire. <laughs> They also had a pool set up with simulated rain and lightning to allow practice with a life raft in storm conditions. This was great practice and is well worth doing if you have the opportunity. paddling toward the casualty. This is an immersion suit, basically like scuba diving neoprene suit, so it should keep you warm if you're in the water for hours. I think it's brilliant.
I'd, I'd pay to come for recreation, <laughs> not just for not just obligation. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm, You've done this course before. Yeah, yeah. Other, another school? Yeah, I've done it at Wars Ash and at uh, Gravesend at the National Sea Training. That's twice. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you should yeah. do it every five years. Is that yeah. Okay. You don't have to do this, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this, like all these elements, you have to do before you can work on a on a, a ship. You have to re, when you renew and, it, and then nice. when you when you renew it, you can do uh, a shorter course as a as a, a refresher. But I choose to do the full course because it's good learning and it's fun. Yes. It is fun. Yeah. It is. I really enjoyed today. How about you? How are you building your sailing skills? Are you interested in getting more training, or have you done some sail training already? Tell us in the comments below. And don't forget to click the link in the description to get 60% off your subscription to Babbel and start learning a new language today. Kunavu in boat hooden.